holy, holy is Lord, holy, holy is Lord. Just cry, holy, holy is the Lord. The angels cry, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy. The Lord, holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord.
summoned by the Holy Spirit to share in this Eucharistic meal with family, friends, neighbors, fellow pilgrims on the journey. May this feast nourish and sustain us as we go forth in joy to continue building the kingdom in our little corner of the world and beyond. The scripture readings for Mass today are found in the bulletin that was distributed as you walked in. And as we gather to worship as a family of St. Columbanus, please stand as we begin our liturgy with a song from our ministers of music. You know, the Lord deserves the highest praise. If you believe that, come on, clap your hands with us. Our Lord deserves the highest praise. The Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord who spoke and everything came into existence. That's how powerful our God is. And he can speak into your situation as well. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever your problem is, the Lord can speak. Just like he's spoken to us, and he breathed life into us, and we became living souls. So come on, help me. Praise the Lord this morning as we give him the highest praise. For he is worthy to be lifted up. Jesus, we lift you. 
Jesus. Amen. Amen. We come uh, come today to lift up this wonderful name of Jesus, this powerful name of Jesus. We come today knowing that this is the day that the Lord has made. So we are gathered here ready to rejoice and ready to be glad. And so church, as we come together for our celebration today, we call on God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. You know, each week that we gather together for this Eucharistic celebration, it is a moment for us to be reminded how merciful, how loving, how forgiving, how awesome our God truly is. That no matter the things that have happened this past week, it's when we stand together here around this altar that God promises each of us the possibility of a new beginning. And so my friends, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we first pause to call to mind our sins and to ask again for God's pardon and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, And of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people, people of goodwill. Amen, 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 amen. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, 
and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want in verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord. right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. I shall live in the house of the before me. In the sight of my foes, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the world. All the Oh, 
only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come I shall circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We praise you, Father. You're wonderful, Lord. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you in all the earth. We give you the highest praise. We sing Alleluia. Alleluia. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes. Enlighten the eyes of our hearts so that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Belongs to our call. Worthy is thy land, worthy 
somebody like you. Are you worthy? Who's so worthy? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. You're holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. You're worthy, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. You're so worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. You're worthy, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I look out into the congregation, I recognize that there's uh, some faces that haven't been here in a while. So it's uh, great to see you. I'm going to ask Darius to turn my mic down just a little bit. So we're working on our uh, sound system to make sure that we have better output uh, for those who are worshiping at home on Facebook Live, which means that today uh, lots of different pieces have to be adjusted as we go. So as I said to the people on Facebook already, thank you for your patience and thank you for your patience here in the sanctuary. But I, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that Babette's here in church this morning, so we're grateful. Uh, and I know there's others that this is your first Sunday back here at church, and so it's still exciting for us as a parish to keep seeing the faces of people that we haven't seen in some time. And to all of you who are worshiping at home with us on Facebook or will worship wait later on today with us, we're grateful that you're able to be here with us today. You know, in our scripture today, there's two verses that I think are really familiar to us 
One of them is a, a verse from the scripture, from the gospel today, that's really a challenge for us and a challenge to us as we think about our life of discipleship. And the other verse that I think is very known to us comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians. It's meant to be a word of encouragement. In Matthew chapter 22 and verse 14, we hear Jesus say at the end of the parable, many are invited, but few are chosen. Many are invited, but few are chosen. It isn't supposed to be a verse that makes us quantify the number of people who find themselves in the kingdom of heaven. But I think it is a verse that challenges us in our own life of discipleship, challenges us to think about what it means for us to be living as disciples of Jesus. And that other word of encouragement that I think all of us know comes from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 that says, I can do all things through him, through Christ, who strengthens me. I know for many of us that are gathered for worship today, that is a scripture of encouragement that we go to when things are difficult. In the moments when we feel like we're not enough, that we don't have the strength that we need, it's good to be reminded that we can do everything through Christ who strengthens us. What I want to submit to you this morning as we uh, enter into this time of the sermon is to really be holding those two scriptures before us. Now, all of you good uh, Catholics and liturgists and Bible scholars already know that the readings that we get uh, on a Sunday or during the week, they're meant to go hand in hand. We hear from the Old Testament, we hear from the New Testament, we hear from the psalmist, we, we hear from the evangelist. All of that is meant to, to give us a focus together. And on some Sundays, when we hear the readings proclaimed from the lectionary, that that connection is easy for us to find. And on other Sundays, it requires a little bit more thinking for us. I think what the parable teaches and the word of exhortation from St. Paul, they really do go hand in hand. And they could speak to us where we find ourselves right now in the midst of our own walk with the Lord, in the midst of our, our own growing as disciples of Jesus. As we just heard this parable proclaimed from the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, I hope after 11 or so weeks of, of listening to me and Jennifer and Mark talk about radical hospitality, that as you heard this Gospel proclaimed, you were excited to think about how radically hospitable this king was in the parable. I mean, this king was someone who was wanting to, to celebrate his son's wedding by throwing a banquet and throwing a feast putting together a party, a celebration for, for whoever it was that he'd be able to find to come to the party. Over the last couple of weeks, in our gospel readings, we've been hearing Jesus speaking to the chief priests and to the elders. Those with religious authority were the ones to whom Jesus addressed this parable. And Jesus says that, that this parable is meant to tell us what the kingdom of heaven, what the reign of God is going to look like. And I know that you already know that parables were this literary tool that, that Jesus used to use an image that was familiar to the community to speak about something that has yet to be seen. So Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who throws a wedding feast for his son. That's the parable. That, that's what the kingdom of heaven is meant to look like. It's meant to look like a king who throws a party, a wedding feast, for his son. And we hear about how those first uh, invitees didn't show up to the party. We hear how the king says that they weren't even worthy to come. How this king then sends out his attendants, some of them who had been beaten and some of them who had been killed, and, and this next group of attendants to go out and sort of uh, invite more people to the party. He gives them a mandate. He tells them to go out into the main roads and invite everyone and anyone that you see. And we've reflected together that that's what it really means to be radically hospitable. That we encounter people where they are, we find people where they are, we invite them into this celebration of the Eucharist that you and I are gathered here for this Sunday. Amen. Yeah. Now, if that's sort of where the parable ends, that would be a really feel-good story for a Sunday morning. Mm. We, we could get on board with this type of king, like this type of king that represents to us what the kingdom of heaven is going to look like. But you know, in the parables, there's always a twist. There's always a turn. There's always something that Jesus says that turns upside down 
what our expectations are. Yes. See, that's what happens sometimes, and I know it would never he happen here at St. Columbanus, that, that when we half listen to the scriptures, or we listen to the parts of the story that we really want to hear, we could have left here feeling good that the kingdom of heaven is like this king who throws a party for his son. But then in verse 11, the twist comes. This king walks into the banquet hall where, where all of these people had been gathered, these people whom others said were unworthy to be at this party. And he looks at one person, one individual, and in verse 12 says, friend, why have you come without a wedding garment? And then in verse 13, he goes on to tell his servants to bind his hands and feet, to toss him out into the darkness of the night where there will be grinding and wailing. This uh, king that's supposed to represent the kingdom of heaven probably just made us feel a little less welcome. He became a little less radically hospitable in this moment. That as he looked out into this banquet hall filled with people who had just been invited to this party, he, he singles out this one individual who came into the banquet hall unprepared for the feast. Now, if you're the type of person that likes to root for the underdog, you, you might be saying to yourself right now, but, but he wasn't even on the original list of invitees to the party. Yes. Or you might even be wondering, like, how long did he have to get ready to come to this party? And just because everybody else could, could find their wedding garments, maybe his was at the dry cleaner and couldn't get it in time yes. for the party. We can make all sorts of excuses and have all sorts of questions about why it is that this king singled out this individual. Mm. But the other side of it is just as true. Mm. All the rest who were invited knew how they should come. They, they knew how to come to this banquet, to this feast, to this party, prepared for the celebration. Scripture scholars say that, that the character of the king is like God. And the son in the story is like Jesus, the son of God. Those first, uh, those first attendants who went out, who were murdered, they were like the prophets of the Old Testament. Those first invitees to the party, the ones who were deemed to be unworthy, they were like the, the chief priests and the elders. They were the religious authorities of the day. That the second group, the second list of invitees is, is the people, the Gentiles, the ones who are deemed to be unworthy. So, so if all of that can make sense to us as the, the characters in this parable, then what does this wedding garment represent? And scripture scholars will tell us that, that the wedding garment could represent all sorts of different things. But, but what I want to submit to us this morning is that the wedding garment it represents the way in which you and I are called to enter into this celebration. I think that's really what the point of this parable is all about. It's about a moment of introspection for ourselves, asking ourselves whether or not we entered into this banquet hall ready for the wedding feast that you and I are here to celebrate. The scholars say that that wedding garment, it represents righteousness. Righteousness, the way of living that you and I are called to as a people of faith. Some weeks ago, Father Adam was here, and he reminded us that, that being righteous doesn't always mean that we're right. To be righteous doesn't mean that we're always correct, and, and to be righteous doesn't mean that we always have to correct the people that are around us. But you see, St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Ephesians in chapter 6, as he talked about this strength of God that you and I are called to put on ourselves every single day, one of the things that you and I are called to put on ourselves is the breastplate of righteousness. Mm. Mm. The breastplate, the, the, the part that, that, that protects our heart and our lungs, the, the most vital of our organs, we are called to cover that with righteousness. Mm. Mm. Read again in the, in the Gospels about Joseph, the husband of Mary the foster father of Jesus, the way the scripture describes him is as a righteous man. That even though Joseph had his own plans, his own dreams, his own hopes, what his life would look like, he was willing and able to submit his life to the will of the father. That's what made him a righteous man. Go back to the Old Testament and read again the story of Abraham. 
The scriptures tell us that Abraham was also a righteous man. That Abraham was someone who was willing to, to have his faith tested and still trust and believe in the plans that God had. And even though Abraham wasn't clear on, on everything that would happen in his life, he was willing to go where it was that the Lord was calling him to. And so the scripture tells us that Abraham was a righteous man. That this individual in our parable from the 22nd chapter of Matthew walks into a celebration that he's been inviting to unprepared to be there. Everybody else that was in that banquet hall was just as unworthy as him. And yet everybody else seems to, come ha seems to have come dressed in the proper way for the celebration. I think if this parable is meant to say something to us today, some 2,000 years after Jesus first told it to those chief priests and those elders, I think it's a question for us. Do we come into this place Sunday after Sunday truly prepared to be here? Do we really walk into this place with our, our minds and our hearts and our spirits open to the ways and, and to the will of the Father? Do we really walk into this place Sunday after Sunday with hearts open to the ways that God wants to move in our midst? Do we walk into this banquet hall week after week to gather for this celebration, trusting and believing in the plans that God has for each of our lives? Because just like those guests at that wedding feast, we come here as an unworthy people. We recognize all of our shortcomings and all of our faults and, and all of the sinfulness in our lives, and yet God still invites us to this celebration. Amen. And even with all of the ways that you and I fall short as we seek to live as human beings, we recognize that God is calling us to something even greater in the kingdom of heaven. I think this parable isn't telling us this morning that, that we have to be a perfect people. Yes. This parable isn't, isn't telling us that, that we have to have everything figured out in our lives. It, it isn't a parable that is telling us that, that we have to have all of the answers and everything about who we are planned out. Mm. But instead, what the parable is asking us to do is to enter into this place wearing that clothing of righteousness, uh, allowing the righteousness of God to be within us, allowing ourselves to live in such a way that we surrender ourselves to the plans of the Father. That, that we let go of our own plans, that we let go of our own desires, that we even let go of our own hopes so that God can do something great in each of our lives. Many are invited, but few are chosen. All of us, every single human person that, that exists on the face of the earth today is invited to gather around an altar like ours to celebrate in this great Eucharistic banquet. But not all of us will choose the hard work of living as disciples of Jesus. I mean, we've reflected on this before. It's easy for us to give lip service about our faith. It's a lot more challenging to put our faith into action. It's a lot easier to celebrate a God who, who's blessing us in our lives when everything is going well than it is to, to recognize how God's hand is in the midst of even our deepest sufferings. It's easy for us to celebrate when things are good in our life, in our relationship, in our finances, in our friendships, at work. It's a lot more difficult when it feels like everything around us is falling apart. It's easy to celebrate a God when, when the plans that we have for our lives seem to align with what it is that God wants, to, wants us to do with our lives, but it's a lot harder when it feels like there are mountains and roadblocks down every road that we try to go. It's easy to celebrate a God when we are living in abundance. It's a lot more difficult to live our faith when we feel like we have nothing. That's where St. Paul's word to the Philippians comes into us today. It is the word that Paul reminds us, a word that we have reminded ourselves with over and over again, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Isn't that what our faith is all about? Isn't that what this parable is trying to teach us? 
in the moments when you and I try to plan for ourselves, when we try to do our own thing, things fall apart. But when we trust in God's plans, when we live lives of righteousness, our lives start to make sense. Remember what I said last Sunday, Paul was writing to the church of Philippi, to a community who found themselves in a moment of great division. There was great suffering for that early Christian community. Paul himself was imprisoned in Philippi. This community was living in a place that wasn't considered a religious sort of town. And in all of that, Paul's exhortation to the community was to continue to say and do everything that St. Paul had taught them. Paul was telling them to be a people of radical hospitality, to encounter one another where you find yourselves, to walk with each other as people of faith, to continue to bear witness to the power of the resurrection of Jesus in our world. And then Paul tells them, look, I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to live a life of abundance, and I know what it feels like to live a life of humility. I know what it feels like to, to have all of my hungers fed, and I know what it feels like to be hungry. That's why Paul is able to say that it's through Christ that he, in fact, finds his strength. And he beautifully tells them at the very end of the letter that my God is the one who fills everything. That's the good news for us today. That as we seek to live lives of righteousness, as we seek to live lives of faith, as we seek to live as disciples of Jesus in our world, the good news for us today is that in the moments of greatest struggle, Jesus gives us the strength to persevere. Jesus continues to give us the strength to keep on keeping on. Yes. Jesus gives us the strength in the, in the moments when it's, when it's difficult to be filled with joy and hope and love and peace, when it's difficult to see the possibilities of the future. It's when we call on the name of Jesus and ask for that gift of strength in our lives that everything about us will begin to change. Paul isn't talking about some theological theory. He's talking about something that he experienced in his own life. That is, he sought to do the will of God. He faced suffering. He faced moments of not having enough. He faced times of doubt. He, he faced great struggle in his walk with the Lord. I have to believe that as you and I gather here on this Sunday morning, there's been moments that we can relate to St. Paul. There's been times when we have lived in an abundance of blessings and in moments when we have felt like we just don't have enough. In times when, when we can experience this peace and this power of God at work in our lives. And times when we are questioning where God is in the midst of whatever it is that we find ourselves going through. The challenge for us as a people of righteousness is to recognize that God's will always prevails. Even when it doesn't make sense, mm. and even when it's not clear, and even when we don't understand it. Mm. Many are invited, but few are chosen. We've been invited here, around the altar today, to celebrate this eternal wedding feast of the Lamb. The eternal wedding feast of Jesus. We are invited into this banquet in this moment with a promise from God that in the times of great difficulty, Christ will be the one who strengthens us. The powerful reminder that no matter what we face this coming week, no matter the division in our country during this election season, no matter the suffering and the pain because of the pandemic, even with all of the prayers that we continue to pray for an end to gun violence in our city, even when our finances are messed up and our relationships are broken and there's dysfunction in our families, and even with Renew My Church right now for our grouping, Christ still strengthens us. The place where we have to do the hard work is to choose to allow God to do that in us. 
God will continue to invite and God will continue to call. God will continue to make a place for each of us around this altar and God will make a place for us in the kingdom of heaven. What matters is how you and I walk into this place week after week. How you and I are willing to wake up day after day, choosing to put on righteousness, choosing to live with faith over fear, choosing to live in the possibilities of everything that God can do for us, choosing to believe that God can do the impossible. Many are invited, but few are chosen. It's when we choose God that we can be reminded that it is Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Well, well, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for that word. And I truly want to embrace you tonight. Sing about the reckless love of God that has brought us here today. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. And all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. And all it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't know it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. And all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Let His love draw you and I to the altar. When I was your foe, still you fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You be kind, Lord. You have been so, so kind to me. And all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. And all it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. And all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Now listen to this now. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. The Lord is coming after you. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. And all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. And all it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. 
I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you gave yourself away. I know the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Listen to that again. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you and tear down, coming after me. Oh, well, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights the lamb found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you gave yourself away. All the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Thank you, Lord. So, my sisters and brothers, I invite you to stand with me. As together we profess our faith, as together we proclaim the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. It's because we believe that God is abundant and the ways that God blesses us, it's because we believe in the power of God to hear us in this moment that we bring our prayers and our needs before our loving God. For the church, that we may always welcome all who approach with sincere hearts and be a model of acceptance and hospitality to all who seek refuge, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel unaccepted or unworthy due to their circumstances, hardships, or identity, that they may always realize God's inclusive invitation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a growing respect in society for all human life, from conception to natural death, from the main roads to the dingy alleys, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord yeah. hear our prayer. For our indigenous peoples around the globe, especially those who have suffered generations of rejection and mistreatment, that they may be treated with respect and dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are homebound or suffering from illness or injury and cannot join us at this feast, and for the ministers of communion who visit them with the Eucharist and our prayers and support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray that the virus Oh, excuse me, we pray that the virtue of baptism, the laity, especially women, 
may participate more in areas of responsibility in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we take a moment to think about our own intentions, please offer a moment of silence. For all of the prayers on our hearts and for all the prayers shared with our community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us continue to pray for Luz Visminda Astores, who passed away a year ago. We continue to pray for her peace and comfort for her family. We pray for all of the members of our parish who have gone before us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most gracious and generous God, we thank you. We praise you for the gift of this day. We thank you, Lord, for assembling us here together this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the abundance that you've allowed us to live in. We ask you to fill each of us with the gift of your spirit to fill us with the courage that we need so that we might always trust in your plans. God, we celebrate you for being a God of righteousness. Help us to grow in the virtue of righteousness. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings and the prayers that you've sent. We thank you for all that you promised to do as we pray together through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, I just want to say thank you for your continued support, your tithing, your giving to our parish. To remind you that if you have your envelopes, you could place them in the brown box that's on your way out of church. You could text the number 773-900-7211 right now. You could pull out your phones, text my giving to that phone number as a way to make your Sunday offertory. You could always visit our parish website and click on ways to give. So again, thank you for your continued support for our parish as we continue to find creative ways to do ministry in this moment. How many of you are blessed? Are you blessed? I know you already are because you're here. That's why I'm going to say blessed, blessed. Blessed, 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 blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go, we break down every stronghold sickness and poverty must cease for the devil is defeated we are blessed we're blessed in the city we're blessed in the field we're blessed when we come and when we go we break down every stronghold sickness and poverty must cease for the devil is defeated we are blessed Blessed, 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 blessed on my job, blessed in my home, blessed at school, blessed, blessed in my neighborhood, blessed, blessed in my church. Oh, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go. Stronghold sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Do you believe it? Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. And around, and around, and around, and around. He'll turn it around. He'll turn it around. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Oh, we're blessed in the 
the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Blessed. Thank you, Lord. We know it's when we gather here at this altar that you and I are truly blessed. So pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory, that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. It is he who comes in the name of the Lord, of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. 
until you come again again until you come until you come again therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, with all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, with St. Columbanus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let the church sing amen. Let the church sing amen. Everybody sing amen. Amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Glory, hallelujah, amen. Amen, amen. And so, together as one community and together in one voice, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily, daily bread, bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, who trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from, from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, 
and my soul shall be healed. you 
dark night will now overtake me I am pressing into you Lord you find my every battle and I study is live at 11 a.m. on Facebook. We'll be in the glass house around noon just making sure the shelves are stocked. We'll be there later that afternoon to make sure that our meals are prepared for our Wednesday food distribution. On Wednesday, 
Our food pantry is open from 10 a.m. until noon. Uh, of course, you're always welcome if you're in need of food or if you would like to come and volunteer. We could definitely use the help on Wednesday mornings. Some of you might notice that in the parking lot, there's a pod that's been sitting out there. So during this month of October, we are collecting clothes as part of the Savers program. So you might remember we did this a couple years ago. You could bring any clothes and books and household items, not furniture. Uh, you could bring it here to church with you and as a, as a way to help the St. Colin Bainus Athletic Center recoup some funds from last year's uh, fiscal year loss because of having to close our basketball season because of the pandemic. You bring your clothes here, we get 20 cents a pound. So I know that some of you have been uh, cleaning out your closet, closets and basements and attics and rooms and cars and all sorts of other places where you've been keeping stuff. Uh, you could bring it here to St. Columbanus and then at the end of this month we'll be being able to just do a fundraiser to support the Athletic Center. So I just want to encourage you, there'll be a bin in the gathering space of the church. Feel free to bring those clothes and items here to church with you next Sunday. On Thursdays, for the next six weeks, all of you married couples are invited to a date night here at St. Columbanus Church. We had uh, six couples that joined us this past week for our Alpha the Marriage course. Uh, it was a great opportunity, I think, for those couples to be here, to share a meal with each other, to have uh, some of us volunteers actually serving the dinner. Um, you get a candlelit table. It's an opportunity to watch a video uh, Mercy and Mark were there. They were holding hands through the whole thing. So that tells you uh, how much love was actually in the air at our marriage course. And so it's really just an opportunity to have some conversation with one another as a couple. So all of you married couples, you are most welcome to join us on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. If you're worried that you won't make all the rest of the weeks, just come this Thursday and find out what the marriage course is all about. There's a flyer for you in the bulletin and more will be put on social media. Also in the bulletin is uh, something from the Archdiocese of Chicago on Renew My Church. And so I just want to talk about that for a moment uh, to give you some context to what's there in your bulletin. Uh, as we've been talking about, we find ourselves right now in the discernment and decisions phase of Renew My Church. So we have a great team. You saw them last week from St. Dorothy and St. Clotilde and then our own people from St. Columbanus. This past Wednesday night, we were at our meeting and we received possible scenarios of what the future of our uh, Chatham and Park Manor grouping might be. In all five scenarios that you see there in the document, uh, we will be most likely one parish. Uh, so I know that this is something that we've been talking about, but I also recognize that when you see it in print, and when we talk about it, and when you are now going to be asked for your feedback, it definitely makes things more real. So each of those five scenarios are possible scenarios about what the future might look like for the parishes of St. Clotilde, St. Columbanus, and St. Dorothy's. What I'm asking you to do is to spend some time over the next week to read through that document that's there in the bulletin, to pray about it, to ask the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and your mind, uh, to come into your emotions and into your logic as you look at those possible scenarios so that next Sunday when we gather here for Mass, after Mass, we'll do a parish town hall. Uh, it'll be an opportunity to hear from myself, from our team members, to learn more about Renew My Church, but most importantly, to hear your feedback about those particular scenarios. So it'll be an opportunity next Sunday after this Mass uh, to, to hear your questions, to hear your feelings, to share, with your, to share with me, with our team, with one another as a parish, what it is that you are thinking as uh, possibilities for the future. And so again, I just want to say that I recognize how real seeing that document in the bulletin makes things. And to recognize, too, that it implies that there will be a change for St. Columbanus, St. Clotilde, and St. Dorothy in the future. As I've been saying this whole time, this is a, a moment for us, a season for us, to really be open to what the Holy Spirit is able to do and to recognize that our faith is bigger than any one parish and our mission is more than just what we have been doing. It's about what it is that God wants to use us for as we look to the future. So if you have any questions this week, you can always call the rectory. You can uh, email 
renew at stholumbanus.org. Leave any questions that you have there. And you'll also see that there's a feedback form that asks some questions. I ask you to fill those out and to bring them with you next week when you come either to Mass, mail them, scan them, and email them to us. Just get us that feedback so we as a team can be best informed about how together we'll be moving into the future. For everything else, I encourage you to take that bulletin home with you, to continue to visit our parish website, to follow us on social media, to remember every Monday morning at 9 a.m. we have a blog that's posted every Wednesday morning. There's a new video that's put on our YouTube channel as a way for us to continue to grow as a community of radical hospitality. Lastly, just a couple people to keep in prayer. Um, continue to pray for Ms. Blakemore, uh, Ms. Carol Salinger, and Mr. Merritt Marks. All of them have been experiencing some health issues, uh, so it'd be good for us as a community of faith to lift them in our prayers. And I think Morocco's here at Mass, yes? Uh, he celebrated his 21st birthday earlier this week, so you want to make sure that you wish Morocco a very happy birthday on your way out of church today. So let's stand together as we pray our prayer for Renew My Church. Lord Jesus, you speak to us today as you spoke to holy men and women who have gone before us. In every age and in our own time, you call to us and say, Renew My Church. Pour out the gift of your Holy Spirit upon us and so enable us to hear you clearly to listen to each other attentively, to imagine our future boldly, to discern your direction wisely, to persevere in your holy will courageously, to stay together in charity, to surrender our own plans readily, to embrace the greater good, to hand on your gifts to future generations. May we remain in the holy company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the apostles, and all the saints. May their example and presence inspire us with patient confidence in the work of your grace. We ask this of you who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my pain. Laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Come on, yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. One more time, yes, Lord. Come on, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord.
Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. 